My name is Mehdi Sharif Sadeh. Uh, thanks for attending my talk. This talk represents parts of my PhD research at the University of Southern California, uh, which is partly funded by Google during uh, the summer 2006 by a research grant. Uh, I'll discuss how a computational geometry data structure named Warren Diagram can be used to efficiently process queries on data sets of spatial objects, shapes, points, polygons, mainly points here. OK, this is the outline. First, I'll introduce and motivate this research. Then I'll talk about uh, which category of spatial queries I'm talking about. And then I'll define Warren diagrams formally uh, using an example. And then uh, I'll talk about different interesting properties of these diagrams. With different case studies, Let's see how many of these we can, uh, I can cover here, at least two of them. Uh, different case studies of these special queries that we can address using Warren diagram, efficiently using Warren diagram. Relation of these queries to Warren diagram and how we can have a Voronoi based special query processing algorithm for these. I'll discuss that. At the end, as always, I'll conclude the talk and hopefully you'll be still happy by then. At USC, I'm a part of this project named Geodec. Geodec is towards building a geospatial data uh, decision-making system. This is a multidisciplinary project. Um, people from AI, computer vision, computer graphics, databases are involved in this. It's partly funded by Google, Microsoft, Chevron, and NSF, and those people. And the mission of the project is that we want to build rapidly and accurately a geospatial space, which is information-rich and realistic. So, it's kind of building a 3D model of a city, but using realistic data. And the system should be connected to different real data sources about that city. And then at the same time, using the system, we can support visualization. We can issue interesting queries on top of this, data, um, this uh, model, and then do data analysis capabilities. There are different applications in city planning, crisis management, real estate, and even these days, news broadcasts. And then, uh, let me first show you a video of whatever we have so far. If you see the video. Okay, I guess I need to switch. Time. have the video somewhere here. OK, another. This one should be seen. No. OK. OK, here you go. So here, you see, you're looking at the 3D model of buildings of USC campus. At the same time, we have a satellite image of the, of the building. We have a bunch of vector data, road data, interesting locations in the, in the data. And then at the same time, 3D model, uh, 3D model of some buildings built using uh, real pictures from the area. At the same time, superimposed on the buildings. There are different parts of these projects. There are parts involving, involving building the 3D models, parts invo uh, involving accurately laying out those road networks on top of satellite image, images. You know that they are not always accurately aligned. And then there are queries. You see these little labels coming. There are uh, labels of the buildings. And this is the live video feed that we put from, uh, from the videos on this 3D model. So this is, at the time that we, see, we demo this, this is a live picture coming from the outside world. And the same uh, 3D model. We don't have sound, so we cannot hear them. But it would, it would be cool if we have like microphones. It's against privacy, but we can have microphones there as well. So use, having this geospatial information-rich data we can have different queries issued on this uh, 
on top of this kind of system. Let's get back to the presentation. Now, what we have is that we have provided this, geo, uh, this user interface to this geospatial space. That through that interface, we can, we, can, we can issue queries. So here, you're looking at this NEGA user interface that supports information of, uh, formation of queries. So we said, this guy is doing uh, a range query here. We want to find all the trams, which are these campus trams that are passing uh, during the a range, a time range, from the area inside this rectangle. And then at the same time, we have, we have different query interfaces. So here, we're using the cyber gloves. It's like kind of Tom Cruise fashion to do this. And then we are supporting different special queries, range query, shortest path, the same driving direction that we have in Google Maps. And then this application is connected to different sources, like 3D models, road vector data, traffic data, point data, moving objects, which are the trams, and then once we, use, we issue the query, the query, the query result is coming back from the engine, our special query processing engine, and then being visualized here. At the same time, we can generate KML files and, and visualize the result in uh, Google Earth as well. So now how my research fits in the whole system. I am targeting a special query processing. And I'm mainly interested on those special, que special queries that are looking for special objects in a database of objects that minimize or maximize a distance based location, a distance based function, which is geomet geometric function. For example, let's say this is my location, x, y, latitude, longitude, give me the closest restaurant to this location. That's a very simple sample of these queries that I'm, I'm targeting. Or let's say I have a, data, a database of the location of restaurants in an area, the location of all police stations in that area, give me the restaurant in that database that with the maximum distance to its closest police station. Let's say we want to see, okay, if, if there is something going on in the restaurant, which restaurant is critical because the police station is too far. Or closed parks, road segments with minimum exposure from nearby, nearby buildings. This is, this is something that we, we are providing for the 3D model. So let's say president is going from point A to point B, give us a route with minimum exposure from the 3D buildings, the top of the buildings, because we want to see how many guards we can put on top of those buildings to prevent events. Okay? So, these type of queries are not limited to systems like Geodec. They are even beneficial for online maps like Google Maps. So, what these uh, map systems these days uh, the simplest form of queries they have. They have nearest neighbor query, you say just give me the restaurants in this area, give me the restaurant in, the, in this area, or you're just saying, okay, give, this is point A, that's point B, give me the driving direction from A to B. But we want more. I want more as a user. So one thing we can do is that, okay, the user says, okay, this is location A, that's location B, give me the restaurant closest to both A and B which is I want to I wanna minimize the, travel, the total travel distance. We are two friends, we want to meet somewhere to have, to dine uh, in an Italian restaurant. Give me the closest restaurant to both A and B. This is called group nearest neighbor query in database terminology. At the same time, you might have this interesting query. You say this is location A, and then I want to go, I want to start from this location A. I want to go drive to a gas station to fuel my car. After that, I want to go dine in an, in an Italian restaurant. After that, I want to go and watch a specific movie in a movie theater that shows that, that movie. Then give me the path, which is the shortest route from A to A gas station, A restaurant, and A movie theater. And then the total travel distance should be minimized. So the result of the query will be go to the gas station A, go to the restaurant R, and then go to the movie theater M. And then the, the route is uh, minimized, the, the, travel, the travel distance. We call it sequence route here. So there are two main specifications of these queries that we can recognize. One is that either in the query result, for example, this closest restaurant to both A and B, the result 
resides in a local neighborhood. For example, here, the, the, the restaurants which are candidates for the, for the result of this query are close to the shortest path or driving direction or the route from A to B. Or, or there's a region within which the result of the query is invariant. So for example, if you say the, the query returns from, from location A, go to gas station G, restaurant R and M, and then you move A a little bit farther in this region, again, the, 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 the query returns you G, R and M. So there might be a polygon like this, a region in general, within which the result of the same query is invariant. So if you say, okay, this is B, my location B, I wanna go to gas station, restaurant, and movie theater, it gives you the same result. So now we show how this data structure named Warner diagram exploit these kind of uh, properties to address these queries. So now let's first define the Warner diagram. What is a Warner diagram? A Warner diagram Given a set of endpoints, like these orange points, a Voronoi diagram partitions the space into n region. Each region, like this region, corresponds to one point and includes all the points in the space whose closest orange point is that point. So any point here, so any point like Q within the region of P, its closest neighbor or closest orange point is P. Q inside the cell of P, we call this Voronoi cell of P. Distance between Q and P is less than distance between Q and any P prime. They have been used since 60s, but they named it after someone named Georgi Voronoi, which should be Y here. This is not, it's, not, it's not limited to Georgi and Matt and those things. They have seen everyone in the nature You can see it in art architecture. So they are a source of inspiration for encoding the concept of closeness. So in these examples where you say you see them in other religion, where, where are the points? The points are the center. So the points has been deleted. But the points is the center. For example, if we go back in this stone, the points are the center of a force that we're just forcing something outward. Now, is there any arbitrary tiling of a space of a row diagram with the point removed? Or are there certain tilings which are not all of row it's, it's unique, what do you mean? In, in a Voronoi diagram, it's always unique. It's, it's right. always, with, with so, a given set of points, always you're getting the same thing. Right. So, but if I, if I segmented the space arbitrarily, okay. um, would, would you be able to say this is a Verona diagram? Oh, that, that's, that's another problem. Looking at something, you can find points. It's not always. For, for any arbitrary uh, partitioning of the space, you cannot recognize the corresponding point that generates that Verona diagram. Yes? Do you have a question? He had asked, uh, why they essentially, why they ended up wearing the points. The points in a lot of them are the nucleation sites where there was a phase transformation. Exactly. So there's, there's a force, power, pushing things outward, and then we, have, we came up with this. So once or, we... Or that it grew that way. For example, if you're solidifying materials in the polycrystalline structure, you're going to have various places where it starts solidifying, and then it grows from there, exactly. and then it bumps into another bit its neighbor when it, when it reaches the air point. Oh, exactly. Okay, now let's go for the properties. Generally, this, ca this type of uh, diagram, they capture the concept of closeness. So you see, you have a distance, then based on this distance and objects, you define this diagram. Then for a given set of points or objects, they are unique. And then what we call ordinary word diagram are the diagram in which the, the points or objects are 2D points and or ND points, and the distance is Euclidean distance, the shortest uh, the, the length of the line connecting to, those two, po two points. And then using, oops, sorry. Okay. Now, using 
Voron diagram, in the Voron diagram, the complexity of the diagram is order n. So the number of vertices and edges of this diagram, these vertices and edges, is order n. And the average number, it's proved that average number of Voron neighbors or Voron vertices of each cell is less than or equal to 6 if you average over all the points for any distribution. And this is, this is good. OK. Now, the definition of Warren diagram is flexible with respect to two things. One is the type of data, data space, whether it would be, it be 2D points, 3D polygons, or even if you can map documents in a peer-to-peer -peer network to high-dimensional points, then you could, you could have uh, the, the Warren diagram of those points in that high-dimensional point. There, the distance is similarity between documents. And then, so two parameters, type of data, and the distance that you're defining. Now, if we change any of these, we'll have a variation of the Warren diagram. So one variation that I'm going to use during this talk is additively weighted Warren diagram, in which each point is assigned a weight, a numeric weight. And the distance between any location in space and any point, orange point here, is defined as the length of the Euclidean distance between Q and P here plus the weight of P. So here. The, the difference between this one, additively weighted Warren diagram, and general Warren diagram is that you have this weight here. And now, having this weight, your, the boundary of the Voronoi cells are not uh, line segments, are not straight lines here. You'll have curves. And you might have points with empty cells. Now, Different variations can be used for processing different queries. Let's go for the case study to see how these guys are connected together. Right, OK. Consider this problem. Let's, let's say you're traveling to LA for a conference. At the same time, you want to decide about the hotel that you want to stay in. You have different attraction areas, attraction points, location in the area that you want to visit. One is the one of the beautiful beaches of Southern California. The location, let's say, is fixed one point. So you have one point beach, one point the conference venue, the location of the conference, and one point is the airport. Which hotel you want to decide to stay in? If you want to decide just based on the distance between the hotel and these points of interest, beach, conference, airport. Obviously, if you compare hotel one and hotel two, Hotel 1 is much better than Hotel 2 because it's closer to airport than Hotel 2 to airport, to beach than Hotel 2 to beach, and conference venue than Hotel 2 to conference venue. So in terms of all three distances to these three interesting locations, one is better than two. So you're not going to decide about two. You, you have one to decide about it. At the same time, you, you have different uh, you have different locations, hotel locations, that you cannot compare them together. For example, you cannot compare H1 to H3, because H1 is closer to conference venue than H3, but H3 is closer to airport than H1. So you want to give up on something. You should give up on airport or conference. We're looking for this query. We call it a special Skyline query. Looks for the location of hotels which are not which, are, which form a candidate for you from which you want to you you find a hotel. So in your candidate, two is not in your candidate hotel. One, three, and four are in your candidate hotel. Why? Because there is no hotel better than three, better than four, better than one. So the problem is that finding hotels close to airport, beach, and conference, the query is that what are the candidate interesting hotels? And then the criteria is that no hotel should be better than a candidate hotel in terms of all distances to A, B, and C. And they, it has applications in trip, trip planning, again, even wireless, wireless sensor networks. We have examples. So this query is defined in terms of distance. But it belongs, in general form, it belongs to a larger category of query in, within database community. They call it general Skyline query. That's the reason that we call it a spatial Skyline query. And we published this paper in VLDB 2006 this year. So let's go to the abstract space. We have a set of data points, P1 to P4. We have a set of query points. P1 to P4 are hotels. Query points, Q1, Q2, 
our conference venue, airport, and then the distance is here, Euclidean, let's say. Then we define P2 is especially dominates P1 once the, distance, the corresponding distance between P2 and Q1 and Q2 is less than the corresponding distance between P1 and Q1. That formally defines it. Distance between P2 and Q1 is less than or equal distance between P1 and Q1. P2 and Q2 is less than P1 and Q2. And at least one of these should be uh, less than instead of less than equal. So in this space, we say P2 especially dominates P1 with respect to distances to Q1 and Q2. So what are the points, given this data, what are the points that, that, that can dominate P1? This is geometry, high school geometry. Let's say we have circles centered at Q1 and Q2 with the radius equal to C, Q1, P1, Q2, P1. Any point inside this circle centered at Q1, its, its distance to the center of the, of the circle Q1 is less than its distance, uh, the distance between center Q1 and P1, right? So P2, the distance between P2 and Q1 is less than the distance between P1 and Q1. So in terms of just distance, P2 dominates P, P1. Now, P2 should be inside this circle as well because the distance between P2 and Q2, Q2 should be less than the P1 and Q2. So anyone in the intersection of these two circles, this area, any point here can dominate P1 because its distance Distances is less than these distances. Distances between P1 and Q query points. So this area, we call it dominator region of P1. If there is no point here, that point is not being dominated. At the same time, anything outside these two circles is being dominated by P1. So P1 dominates point P3 because it's outside this circle. And we call it dominance region of this P1. At the same time, there is no dominance relation between a point like P1 and a point like P4. P4 is not within inside this dominant, dominator region of P1, not inside the dominance region of P1. So if we, if we find points like P4, for them, no point is dominating them. Those are the candidate points that we want to find. Any question here? So the query, obviously, is finding the data points that are not especially dominated. Here, the answer will be uh, P2 and P4, yes, because P1 is being dominated by P2, P3 is being dominated by P1. Now, how we solve this in a naive way? If you want to solve this in a naive way, for each point, like P2, we need to iterate over all the points, like P1. We need to compare the distances to the corresponding distances of P1 with the query points. If all of them are less than this, and then we iterated over all the points, P1, P3, and P4, and we found that there is no point that is better than P2 with respect to distances to Q1 and Q2, then P2 is a part of solution, just a part of solution. And then we do the same for all the points. So that's a naive solution. Efficient, um, there are, this is not efficient. We can do many things to, to make it efficient. But let's just focus on this. What is the complexity of this? We are comparing every, two, every pair of the points. So the complexity here has P2, which is the number of data points. And then for each point, for each two points that we are comparing them together, for each one, we are doing Q distance computation between the data point and query points. Q distance computation for one point of the pair, Q distance computation for the other point of the pair. So we have two Q distance computation for each of these tests, dominance tests. So then the complexity will become order P to Q. But this is not good. This is not, the complexity is high. And the dominance, the number of dominance checks that we are doing is getting increased with the number of data points and the number of query points. So once you have different attraction locations that you want to visit, you have a movie theater that you want to go, you want a museum that you want to go and see, you want a site visiting, a site visiting point, like a, uh, somewhere, a mountain or something that you want to say, you want to go and see, 
This is not scalable in terms of number of points that you're adding to your query. I have a question. Sure. If the, if the distance computation is really the limiting factor in this algorithm, can you cache it for the query? The query is coming in real time. Right. So, but for one query, uh, you don't need to look up the distance for every pair. You could just uh, look up the distance from each inter interest point to each uh, starting point and cache it. No. At the time of the query, you're getting a number of query points. I think what you're saying is um, when you compare P1 to P prime, if you've already computed the distance from P prime to you can P1, you cache that thing. That's so one thing. Yeah. Right. Yes. There are many things you can do over that naive approach. The naive approach is just because you want to realize that how a naive approach or even an improvement of, of a naive approach is not good. So. Let's go to the properties. Uh, what do we have here now? OK. This belongs to the general uh, Skyline algorithms, the category, a uh, large category of uh, algorithms, uh, queries. There, we have a database, a multi-dimensional database. Each record has two columns, rating price. This could be hotels, but they're not locations. Each point has a hotel, the, the information of a hotel, rating price. Then the skyline of this data is the points whose are not, uh, that are not dominated by any other, hotel, any other point here. So if a hotel is here, the price is, uh, the rating is less. Let's say less rating is better here. The rating is less, but the price is high. But there is no other hotel that has the less rating than this. So if you find the skyline of these points or the hotels, then we are getting the skyline of this, this database. But the thing is here, these attributes are static and they are not spatial. What, what we have is that we have the space of locations, longitude and longitude, and then the query comes by user in real time, the location of the user, the, the location of the queries. And then uh, these attributes, which are defined in terms of query points, are dynamic. So we cannot use a general Skyline algorithm for, for this problem. And at the same time, this problem belongs to a geospatial space. So there are lots of opportunities, opportunities for optimization once realizing the geometric properties of, that, of, of, this, of the problem. There are many works in the literature on general Skyline query and a special nearest neighbor. I'm not going to talk about them. So the complexity of Naira approach was order P2Q. We want to. In decreasing this complexity by increasing the number of data points that we, want, we are checking and decreasing the number of query points that are affecting the result. We show that there are query points that they're not actually affecting the results. Now, first, we identify a, sort of, a subset of definite skyline, skyline points. For these points, we don't need to do anything. We don't need to do a dominance check. Let's see how these points are. So, we have data points, orange points, query points, light blue points. If we have the Voronoi diagram of data points, orange points, then, and this is, this is the query points, and the triangle is the convex hull of the query points. The convex hull is the unique, the unique convex polygon that includes all the points in the, in the data. So now, if there is a point like P, whose Voronoi cell intersects with the convex hull, the point P is a definite skyline point. And there is no need to do dominance check for this point. So if we have the Voronoi diagram of the data set and we form the convex hull of the query set, then we d just do an intersection between Voronoi cells and the convex hull. We don't, we don't need to do any dominance check for these points. I'm not saying that these are the only points in the result. These are definite points in the results. So there should be actually in the result. There are more points as well. That's the main property we, are, we have exploited and proved uh, to find this algorithm. So let's go for algorithm to see how this works. The algorithm is Voronoi based. So it's, it uses, utilizes the Voronoi, Voronoi diagram. How it works, with no dominance check, adds any data points whose Voronoi cell intersected with the convex hull of Q. So we eliminate a number of dominance checks here. At the same time, we do dominance checks only for a limited set of points. And what are those points? Those points 
are the neighbors of these this definite skyline points that we just found here. So we don't need to do the pairwise thingy. We don't need to do lots of computation. At the same time, as we are using the convex hull of the query points, you see that if there is a query point inside the convex hull, obviously that query point is not affecting the result. So the previous example, in the previous example here, we have four query points, but one of them is inside the convex hull. So we can just eliminate this. We can prove that this point is not affecting our result. So even if we do the knife solution, we don't need to do the, query com the com distance computation with this point. So these are two observations. And actually, we proved this. So let's see how this works. So we have a set of data points. Then we are getting, uh, we assume that we have the Voronoi diagram of data points given or pre-built, pre-computed. So we have this. Then we got the query points, light blue points here, four. The first step of the algorithm, the name of the algorithm is VS2, is that we compute the convex hull of the query points. This is easy, order log, uh, n log number of query points, which the number of query points are always, is not, they're not that many compared to the number of data points. Then we start traversing the Voronoi diagram from a random point, any point. At each step, we do, so the, the order of this traversal is in the order of some of distances of the points that we are traversing, we are visiting in the diagram, the sum of the distances between this point and the vertices of the convex hull. So if we want to get inside the convex hull, we want to traverse this and get inside the convex hull, we need to minimize that distance. So we start from that point, we visit all the neighbors of that point, the, the cell of the nat, that point. We do the same iteratively. At each time, we are visiting this red point, and then we are extracting all the points whose Voronoi cell are neighbors of the Voronoi cell of the visited point. We use a min heap sorted based on the distance between the points that we are visiting and the, the vertices of the convex hull. So this obviously gets us inside the convex hull of the points. We don't have, notice, we don't have any, we don't have any tool to browse the space, the data points. We are using the query, the, the Voronoi diagram. We are using this Voronoi diagram to traverse the space. We don't have any R3, we don't have any index structure, flat data points, they're not sorted. So once we get here, we know that this point is the convex, one of the skyline points. Why? Because its Voronoi cell is intersecting with this convex polygon, convex hull of the query points. Then we go further. So for this point, we didn't do any dominance check. We just check the intersection of the Voronoi cell and the convex hull. Further, that's the second point, third, fourth. So far, we did no dominance check. Instead, we did intersection check between the Voronoi cells and the convex hull. Now, here comes this point. This point is not a definite point. Why? Because its Voronoi cell is not intersecting with the convex hull of the query points. So we need to examine this. Even now, we just examine this and do the dominance check between this point and the points found so far. We have proved that if any point want, want to dominate this point, if any point in the data points want to dominate this point, it should be found so far using this traversal that we are doing. So you see the whole Voronoi diagram and traversing the whole Voronoi diagram during the Voron uh, using the adjacency of the Voronoi cell gives us this nice, uh, this nice directed traversal of the space so that we, we find the spatial skyline points in an order that eliminates the pairwise uh, comparison of the points. Now here, that's another point because of this intersection, and then we are done. Now, you might, see, you might say, okay, we have traversed the whole space, but now, 
notice that this could be a small part of the whole Borel diagram of the points. And then once we start from any point here, even a point here, in a small number of steps we can get here. We have, I have the complexity here, I guess. Okay, let's say this. Now, you might say, okay, when you want to stop this traversal? This traversal stops somewhere in the middle of this traversal. Why? Because if once we have the very first um, skyline point, we can form the dominance, we can maintain the dominance region of that point. The dominance region of that point is anything outside this. So once we we uh, arrived at the boundary of this small rectangle, we can stop. So obviously this is stopped somewhere. And we, we, we have observed that we, we are stopping very earlier than getting to that boundary. Now, what is the time complexity order S2, which is the number of skylines that we found, number of results, we are doing in the worst case that we are doing dominance check, we are checking just with the vertices of the query points, which is the vertices of the query points are always less than the, uh, the number of query points. So this is obviously less than order P2 key, Q, and even any efficient uh, improvement over naive. Now, we have another factor here, which is the complexity of finding the data points from which we, we get inside the convex hall. That could be order log P if we have a point location algorithm, or it could be a square root of p, even with no th nothing. Because if you have all the, all the points in, a, in, a, in an S-square-shaped uh, region, then you just need, on, on average, you just need to, get to, uh, to traverse just one width of it, or width and length of it. We did this uh, experiment using G uh, USGS data, including one million locations. X is the number of query points. Uh, it's raining here. Uh, number of query points. And this is the query response time that we got. We see BBS is the only general uh, Skyline algorithm that is applicable on this problem. But it's just for general Skyline problems. It uses an R3 on the data points. Uh, we, uses, uh, we, we use a Voronoi diagram, pre-built Voronoi diagram on, on, uh, on the data points. Now you see how the improvement is. So once we get more queries, our improvement is getting better. So less than 0.5 seconds, even with 10 query points. And it's, it's getting better. It's, so the, the, the difference in improvement is getting better. So uh, I guess even with 100, I, I've tried this with 100 query points, even with half of the data size, uh, even with uh, 200. 50k query points, and it's still, I don't have a number here, but it's still better than BBS, much better than BBS. Any questions so far? So let's go, so what are the benefits of Warren Diagram for this specific query? We got a data structure that gives us directed traversal of data points. At the same time, we can explore the local neighbor, neighborhood that have, that includes all the, the result of the query. At the same time, at the same time, we have this finding, we found a set of definite skyline points in terms of their Voronoi cell. So still Voronoi cell or Voronoi diagram is useful here. Now, in the, in the actual paper, we have a variation once you have the number of uh, your query points are moving or you have non-special attributes, you wanna, you wanna decide on the hotels based on their distance, the distances and their prices or their rating. And then a future direction that I'm working on is that instead of those Euclidean distance between hotel points and the conference venue, we need to drive. So we need to go through the road network. Second case study is named Optimal Sequence Route Query. That's the query we talked earlier. We have this home, we want to drive from here to a gas station, restaurant, and movie theater. And then problem is that finding, find me that optimal route from home, gas station, restaurant, and movie theater. Obviously, the greedy route that we, we go to the closest gas station to home, the closest restaurant to that gas station, and the closest movie theater that, to that restaurant is giving us a larger, uh, a larger 
um, um, a longest distance route. Because we are, at each step, we are optimizing only a, a segment of this route. So here, if these are one unit, the length of this route is 15. Once we go with the optimal route, the optimal route is this one, which is 12. You see that the gas station is actually the second closest gas station to home. And the restaurant is the farthest restaurant from gas station. But the thing is, the whole, the travel distance, the, the, some of the travel distance from home to the movie theater is minimized. So you see that the greedy route is not good here. And it's not working. Sometimes it's much worse than optimal route. So you cannot even use it as an approximation to the optimal route. Because you're accumulating errors in the, uh, the size of number of sequences, the type sequences that you want to visit. Okay. Now, again, in an abstract way, we have a set of points, locations, and then each point has a type shown in different colors here. We have five points, uh, five point types here. The distance, let's say again, Euclidean distance for simplicity. Then you have a query points and a sequence. You say I want to go to a pink, red, and uh, orange point. Then the optimal route is something like P1, R1, O1. The answer of the query will be P1, R1, O1. If the query is starting at Q with the sequence pink, red, and uh, orange. And then the greedy route is here. Obviously, longer than the optimal route. So in real world, in some of the real world applications, this sequence is important. You might say, OK, why you are enforcing gas station before dining? So you want to fuel your car before going dining. Or you want to dine before going to, uh, going to movie theater. And there are, again, applications, the same areas, trip planning, crisis management. Now, what is the challenge? If you, want to, if you want to solve this in a naive way, what is the solution? You can form this graph. This is your query point, this point. And then you have all the pink points, which is the first type in your sequence, Gr red points and orange points. You connect this Q point to all pink points, P each pink point to all red points, each red point to all orange points. Now, if you find the shortest path, and then from Okay, and the weight of each edge from Q from from one point to another point is the distance between two points. And then, if you want to find the optimal sequence route, you need to find the shortest path from Q to any of these orange points. Then you pick the smallest one, the one with the with the shortest distance. So any Dijkstra flavored algorithm, A star algorithm, any shortest path, undirected graph. Directed graphs algorithm can be used to solve this. But the problem is that the number of edges are growing with the number of data sizes. The whole computation grows exponentially with the size of the sequence and polynomially with the number of data points. So once we add more points here, this, large is getting, is, this graph is getting larger. It's a structure. You don't want to store it. But if you, if you want to store it, store it or keep it in main memory, you cannot do it. Maybe you want to use external memory algorithms, but again, there are lots of uh, improvements that you can do over this, this uh, naive solution. Now, we introduced this query in VRDB Journal. We provided two solutions, one for vector spaces, which is not actually Voronoi-based. It was using an R3 data structure. And another algorithm for metric spaces, which was through road networks. The distance was the shortest path through road networks. Similar queries has been um, introduced by the database committee, especially the database committee. Three planning queries. They eliminate the sequence. They just say subset. Let's say I want to I go to a gas station, restaurant, and movie theater, but no sequence. Give me the one with the sequence that gives the optimal route. And that's actually NP-hard. So they provided approximation solutions. And other queries like k-stop queries. Now let's say how I'm using I'm using Warren diagram to, to uh, solve this. Remember, ordinary Warren diagram, we have Euclidean distance 2D points. And that was the, if a point Q is inside Warren cell of P, distance between Q and P is less than distance any P prime and Q. Now we have additively weighted Warren diagram. Each point is assigned a weight. And then if 
Q is inside the Voronoi cell of P, then the distance between P and Q plus the W or weight of P is less than distance between Q and P prime and weight of P prime. So they're adding one weight to Euclidean distance to define another distance. We're gonna use this for, up for sequence queries. Now, we have exploited two properties. One property is that if the answer to this query, starting from Q, going to pink, red, and orange, is P1, R1, O1, then O1 is the closest orange point to R1, which is a red point. And the intuition is that if you add any other point, like O2, which is not the closest point to R1, you'll, you'll, you'll get a longer point, a longer route. The same can be generalized for any sub route of this route, actually a suffix route of this route. So if, again, if from Q to pink, red, and orange, you're getting P1, R1, O1, then if you start from a specific point, P1, and you wanna go to a red point and an orange point, then R1, O1 is your answer. Obviously, the same, can, we generalized the, the previous result, because if from pink point P1, we go to R2, O2, which is red and orange, and this is longer than this, then the end result is longer than P, Q, P1, Q1, O1. So you see that we are uh, recursively defining OSR query. So if the OSR query, the answer of the OSR query from Q to a pink, red, and orange is P1, R1, Q1, O1, then the OSR query from P1, which is the fir very first uh, point in our optimal route, to a red and orange, which is the suffix of this original sequence, is R101. So any suffix of the road is optimal if we start from the end. This was the closest point to R1. R101 was the closest uh, route with pink, oh, sorry, red, red, and orange from P1. So here we have the same result. The suffix R1, O1 is the answer only depends on the location of P1. Why? Because once we found P1, which is the first pink point in the route, then the rest of the route can be independently defined using the subsequence of this original sequence, red, orange, and the location of P1. Now we do this. For each pink point, we do this. We find the optimal sequence route from each pink point to a red point and an orange point. Once we do this, for each pink point, we can assign one weight. The weight is the length of the optimal sequence route that we just found for each pink point. So here, the weight of P1 is the distance between P1, R1, and R1, O1, the sum of this. Now, what we have, we know that per definition of OSR, as the answer of this query is starting from Q, going to pink, red, and orange is P1, R1, O1, then the distance between Q and P1 plus the weight of P1, which is P1, R1 plus R1, O1, is minimum over all the PIs. Because we just defined the weight of PI as its distance to, its, to red and orange is in its optimal sequence route to red and orange. So now it reminds us of this formula. We were minimizing distance between a point Q inside this region to P1 plus W of P1. Here we are minimizing the same. So you see the relation. It's, it might be hard to get, but at least you see that the same relation that we are having to define an additive, additively weighted Voron diagram, the same relation is coming out of the properties of the result of opt optimal sequence route. So now, based on this, we define this optimal sequence route query processing scheme. If we assume that we have the sequence beforehand, before the query time, so you know that the users are gonna query for gas station, restaurant, and movie theater, 
That's the limitation we have here, because we want to pre-compute. Then we construct, if we have three types, we construct three different additively weighted Warren diagram to find the optimal sequence route uh, to any query. Then this is offline. So we construct these points offline. Then in online, we just get the location of the query. You say, OK, here is my location, and the sequence is gas station, restaurant, and movie theater. And I have built all the Warren diagrams pertaining to that sequation, uh, sequence. Then we iteratively use this Warren diagram. How we use that? First, we have the additively weighted Warren diagram of all pink points. Let's say the sequence is pink, red, and orange. I have the AW Warren diagram, additively weighted Warren diagram of all pink points. First, I locate Q inside this diagram. I find the point P1, the point corresponding to the cell including Q. Obviously here, distance of Q and P1, PI, plus the weight of PI is minimized per definition of additively weighted Warren diagram. So I have point P, P1. Then I use the additively weighted Warren diagram of red points. I find, I locate P1, the pink point that I just found, in the Warren diagram of red points. I find R1 as the red point corresponding to the cell including P1. The same happens with R1. I find R1 in the ordinary Warren diagram of orange one points. Then the cell includes R1 has O1 as the point. Now, what is the result? The result is P1, R1, O1. The three points that I just found using these three Warren diagrams. I didn't talk about how we build these diagrams, because it was the same, the same way that we answered this query, the reverse um, traversal of this query can give us the same uh, this Warren diagrams. So building these Warren diagrams is similar to doing the same query processing, but uh, in a reverse order. We start, we start from the ordinary Warren diagram, Incrementally, we build actively Warren diagram of red, actively weighted Warren diagram of pink, and then we are done. So now, this is the data set. We use a sample of those USGS data set, locations in the entire US, 250K locations, X sequence size, the number of types in the, in the query, and this is query response time. We compared this Voronoi based approach, OSRV, with the R tree based approach R Lord. And then you see this is even using 12, locating the points in 12 Warren diagrams, we are answering the query almost instantly. Because obviously we have pre computed everything, but the nice thing is that the whole pre computation information is encoded in Warren diagram. But the result is getting increased. The time is getting increased even, with, uh, even if we have more number of locations here. Sorry, is it R tree? Is it just like a spatial index, like a BSP tree or not tree? It's uh, R tree is a spatial index. Yes, it's it's actually a regular index structure that they have in Oracle DB2. Now, what are the benefits? The benefits is that we encoded all the regions with the same result in one. Uh, Voronoi cell. So now uh, we can just locate the points and then get the result. And then the, again, we explore the, that local neighborhood that included the result. Now, I want to show you a demo. I don't know if we have time. Do we have time? Five minutes time. OK. Uh, this one. At some point, I decided to. Uh, build an interface to this algorithm using Google API. So here we have a number of data points, types. These little icons are representing locations. The color represents the type. So here, for example, buildings are blue. This is USC campus. There are lots of buildings there. And then cemeteries are gray. Churches are red. And then you can say, OK, I want to go to a school, and then a hospital, and then let's say, a church. <laughs> I have a bad, I had a bad example when we, were, we had demoing this. I had 
this hospital, cemetery, and church, <laughs> which was giving a good result. I'll show you that one as well. So now you say, OK, I am here. Then you see it's, it's going through Euclidean distance, so it's not going through the road network. But the blue one, the blue route, is the optimal route, and the red one is the greedy one that you go to, to closest school, then closest hospital, then closest, uh, closest church. 37 in the space, this is not real distance, this is in, this, this, in the latitude and longitude space, uh, is 37 the optimal one, 45 is the greedy one, and so on. So you have different point types once we traverse this. That's the hard thing that I, that I need to get from Google Map to somehow get the points from Google Map and plot, plot them. I have the Google Map, uh, the, these points data somewhere else. I have a JSP that I query there, and then I plot this, everything here. Because Google Map just gives me this blind raster image. OK. Uh, what else we have? If I have five minutes, I can show you this demo as well. This is, OK. This is not working on uh, Firefox because it's using Microsoft map points. So I'm sorry to showing you that, but at some point I was, I wanted to do this. So uh, let's see if it's working at all. Yes, it's working. So now this one comes from map, map, Microsoft map points. I am loading location data. Hopefully it gets here very soon. Uh, OK, we have location data. These are the points. This is, this is the demo of a special Skylon query. Now we have the points. The points, let's say, these are our hotels. And then you say, this is one location. This is, for example, conference venue. This is airport. And then this is beach. And then give me the skyline or the, lo the, the location of the hotels that I, that I need to select from them. And there is no hotel better than them. So you see the results come back. The, uh, this, is very, this, is a, this is a very small subset of USGS data. So the blue points are hot actual location of the hotels. I have mapped them to the intersections for implementation issues. And then uh, the black points are the points that are in a special skyline. So these are the points that you need to decide about them. Obviously, this point is worse than one of these points. OK. So we're going to finish this. I have two more case studies, but let's skip them. Uh, so to conclude. The Warren diagrams, before conclude, uh, the Warren diagrams, they encode this concept of closeness. And the concept of closeness defined based on any arbitrary geometric relation based on distance. They encode it, and then whatever you pre compute in a space, you can represent it using a Warren diagram. And then a pre computed solution to many of these special queries on that large category of queries can be uh, fined by Voronoi diagrams. And then after you find the Voronoi diagram, answering a special query is just locating points inside the Voronoi diagram. You might say point location is expensive. You need something for point location, yes. On top of the Voronoi diagram, you need an efficient, you need an efficient algorithm to do the point locate, uh, locating the point inside a map, a partitioning of the space. What we're doing right now is that we want to use network Voronoi diagram. These are Voronoi diagram optimized for road networks. Network Voronoi diagram to process both optimal sequence route queries and the special skyline queries once the distance is the distance through the network, the actual distance. And then thanks, and these are the references publication on this material. Thank you. So, I, I may have just missed it, but did you mention the uh, kind of complexity of building the Voronoi diagram? I know, I didn't. Uh, OK. So Voronoi diagrams are being built. So they are 
at least or, uh, ordinary Voron diagram are closely related to sorting. So order n log n is the thing that you can get. So the classic algorithm, fortune algorithm that you have for uh, building Voron diagram, ordinary Voron diagram is order n log n. But additively weighting, weighted Voron diagrams should be uh, more complex because you have these curves and then you have these uh, points that they don't have any cell. Uh, but it should not be that bad. And the representation is order n because it's a toy has. Like yes. At least with the ordinary, even with, with the uh, additively weighted Warren diagram, for, with the ordinary Warren diagram, the number of vertices and number of edges is order n. Right. Once you store it, just order n. And then once you have the average number of Voronoi neighbors, six, you'll end up having like six n, storing six n information. And there is a dual representation of the whole thing. And that's actually the thing that we're using. We're not using, we're not, you're not, we're not using those polygons, Voronoi cell. We're using this Delaunay tri triangulation or Delaunay graph, which is a dual structure of the Voronoi diagram. I just talked about Voronoi diagram and I described everything based on Voronoi diagram because they are very good for uh, visualizing things. But the whole implementation is using Delaunay triangulation or De Delaunay uh, graph.